Hello to you fellow wealth hackers. Well, it's Scott Pickin here and I want to bring with to you the lessons of what I've learned from day one of Leaders in Truth. Now, one of the things that I've learned, you know, I'm going to start with that and you've heard me say it many times is that woodcutter analogy where we're all so busy and we're out there you know, trying to hustle and make the world a better place and make money and keep everyone happy and keep our kids and our family and da, 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 da. And there's that analogy of the woodcutter where you literally, there's these two men and they're both cutting down trees and the one is just cutting down trees the whole day long and the other man every 45 minutes goes and sits in the shade and sort of just has a break for 15 minutes comes back after 15 minutes and cuts trees again and at the end of the day the first woodcutter has cut nowhere near as many trees as the one that was taking all the breaks and he's he's pissed off i mean he's worked harder than him he, it's, he's like this is ridiculous i worked much harder than you and you got better results than me and he says yeah because when i was sitting down I was not only relaxing, I was not only regaining my strength, but I was also sharpening my saw. So the question I got for you is, what do you do to sharpen your saw? So I do personal development, I do retreats, and I've come to this uh, Leaders in Truth. And I've come to the most incredible place. It's run by Kerry, and I highly recommend that you go and check it out. I'll give a full testimonial at the end, because I'm only halfway through the journey. But, you know, we came to this place called Planet Sankara, which, as you can see, is just sensational. I mean, it's literally 220 kilometers north of uh, Cape Town, I've had the privilege of going to retreats and venues all over the world. This is one of the best I've ever been to. So whether you're part of retreats or whether you just want to come on a romantic weekend or a beautiful, beautiful spot, check out Planet Sankara. It's absolutely incredible. So let's review day one. Well, day one for me started with us waking up in the morning, walking up a hill, literally getting to the top of the rocks. And I was doing a morning prime, which is a Tony Robbins thing. Um, our 60 day challenges and our wealth hackers will know what I'm talking about. And literally as I was doing the prime and the energy thing was coming, the sun like was rising and it's all about gratitude. And it was just the most incredible way to start a day. Like literally the day before, chaos, work, the world wanting my attention and just the peace of being out in nature was just phenomenal. Then we basically got started and, you know, we set our, we set our intent, you know, it's like anything in life. It always starts with the why. Why are you here? What do you want? If you don't get clear on the, on the why, you always, everyone always wants the how and the what, but unless you get clear on the why, you're never going to get it, basically. And I, it was really, really weird because I said, you know, I want insight. And, you know, someone actually said to me, I hope that you go and get insight. And it's just, it just was really uncanny for me, basically, in terms of that process. Then for me, and um, sorry, I'm going to have to run and get some stuff. Two seconds. I should have been slightly better prepared, so I left you with the view. But um, I'm actually here at the venue. So the first thing was we started off with uh, Rose Quartz, okay? Now, I didn't know this, but this is self-love, okay? It represents self-love. And what's really interesting is that to receive self-love, you have to hold it in your left hand. Now, you'll notice here that it's got lots of sharp edges, a couple of dirty marks, and the whole thing with self-love is you've got to love yourself for, for the good and the bad. And... It's really interesting. I came here for insight and the other thing I came here was for self-love. I've had a very, very tough six months. And for me, this was three days out for self, um, which by the way, I highly recommend. But I just thought incredible to start off with literally this in terms of that process. Then we moved on to the Enneagram. And um, well, two things. First, we did the hero's journey. So if you don't know about the hero's journey, I'm not going to go into all the detail about it. But it's really, really interesting the journey that we all go through. And every single one of us goes through his hero's journey. And what's really important is that you need to know where you are on the journey so that you can anticipate what the next steps are. And you'll probably find in different cycles of your life, you're going in different, you're at different stages depending on, you know, that part of your life. But it's really, really interesting when you understand the hero's journey. Like if you're going on a, on a, on a walk and you've got no idea where you're going, like it's quite overwhelming. But if you've got a map, like life can be a lot easier. So we started off with the with the hero's journey and then we moved to the Enneagram and I've done a hell of a lot of personal development profiling. I mean, I, I literally thought I'd done every one that, that, that pretty much existed, but I hadn't done the Enneagram. And what's different for me with the Enneagram is that every other personality profile like tells you who you are. And it's actually quite a nice thing. It's like the Wealth Dynamics one from Roger Hamilton. You know, I'm a creator and it's 
that's what Roger, you know, uh, Richard Branson's like. And I'm like, cool, I love Richard Branson. It makes you feel good and whatever. The Enneagram's different. It's built to deal with your self-wounding as a child. All of us have wounding as a child, every single one of us. And there's, I think, um, eight, nine different profiles in the Enneagram. So anyways, we got our cheat sheets. Um, interesting enough, I'm a seven and an eight, <laughs> like exactly. Although if you ask me, I've got a huge amount of... Um, overlap between the two but I'd probably if you put a gun to my head say an eight but this was profound to me because this is all about your childhood wounding who you are why you are who you are um, and most importantly how you can improve back to the hero's journey where are you self-discovery ultimately get to the to the next point you know so you know and what, what I found really interesting in the in the in the workshop that we did was that the research that's out there is that when you are five years old you're all children 98% of children are in the genius zone. 98% of us at the age of five are in the genius zone. By the age of 10, it's 30%. And by the age of 30, it's 2%. Now, you might say, oh, Scott, you airy fairy and you rah rah and you woo woo and all this. No, because if you don't have self discovery, you'll never find the path to your freedom. And that's the lesson that I've been learning really intensely over the last. I would say eight years. You know, we did a we did a meditation, and after doing the enneagram, <clears throat> and then we went out. And we actually sat in this incredible environment, and you know, literally, if I just pan around you, you'll see what I'm what I'm saying. So this is the hexagon where we're doing all the work. That's the uh, restaurant and and whatever, and you can just see this incredible, incredible, beautiful, beautiful environment out in nature. Anyways, I, I went out and sat on one of these rocks here and literally wrote this letter, wrote about two hours out in nature to write a letter to your younger child and to really kind of now with the knowledge of the Enneagram and I've done a huge amount of personal development in the last 25 years, taking all that knowledge into account and writing this letter. And, and what I found was that, you know, I've been doing this meditation for about 18 months now around courage, creativity and connection. And I realized that I'd been wanting to connect with others but actually, before I can connect with others, I must connect with self. And ultimately, connecting with self is connecting with the inner child. You know, as Tony Robbins says, um, if you want to heal the man, heal the boy. And what I'd, I'd go further and say, if you heal the boy, you find your path to freedom. And every one of us, man or woman, um, have a journey to go on. Because every single one of us has wounding from our past. And if we're not prepared to go there, if we're not prepared to go to the pain, we'll never get to the other side which is where the pleasure and the joy lies. So that was a really, really profound um, experience for me in terms of the whole process. We then, we then had lunch and we went, then we went into our limiting beliefs. Now again, having done this many, many times before, it felt a bit of like, oh, it's the same thing over and over again. But you know what I realized is that it's not a destination. Like life is a journey and we have to enjoy the journey and that I'm never going to get over my limiting beliefs ever completely. But every step that I persevere, repetition is the mother of skill. I'm going to get better and better and better at overcoming those limiting beliefs. And so we did this whole limiting beliefs exercise. It was really, you know, um, reminding for me, not, not enlightening because I've done most of it before, but reminding. And, and again, what you focus on is what you get. And then what you do is you do the limiting beliefs and then you turn those limiting beliefs around. Now to anchor that, we actually went and we, um, we put it on a board. So... You can see here was my limiting beliefs and interestingly enough the top one is uh not good enough not worth my true you know not worth uh, not worthy of true love you know, bad with relationships bad with finances don't deserve wealth i need to su be successful to be wealthy of love and respect you know stuff that i've worked on for 25 years and um and then on the other side you you turn it around and you you build it into positive beliefs and empowering beliefs and for me it's I am good enough I'm worthy of true love I'm amazing at relationships and trust my intuition I understand finance and can have anything I want by adding enough value to other people I deserve the abundance in my life and I'm loved and respected and then finally I'm free and then at the top here you've got a courageous and playful lion and love and respect and faith and joy and anyway what you do is you put that on a on a on a board and you you break it 
And uh, what I found quite quite bizarre was you would think that this would break in the middle, and yet it broke at the top, right through, not good enough. Which is the underlying belief that um, I've been working on since I learned about it with Tony Robbins back in 2005. So what's that? 18 years I've been working at that. So like I told you, it's never a destination. It's always a journey. And then, <clears throat> I'm just looking at my notes here. And then actually we did a breathing exercise. And this is something that I'm not that afraid with. And it was a longer, it was like an hour and 20 minutes of this hectic, intense breathing exercise. A lot of this comes out of India. And um, it really kind of, it, build, it brings up a lot of emotions, brought up a lot of anger in me. And, um, and a lot of stuff, you know, from, from, from my, my past. And, and then there was this, like this, this peaceful meditative music afterwards. And it spoke about a new dawn, a new day, and a new life. And I think for me, it's a great way to end off my synopsis of the environment. You know, there's nothing more powerful than going away on a retreat, being with a group of like-minded people. You, you're on your own personal journey, but you're holding a container to, to do it together. And I really want to thank Kerry for day one and, and you know, the whole sort of leaders in truth, because this is the gift that, that they are giving us. Equally, we're giving it to each other, but most importantly, we're giving it to ourselves because all of us are busy. Every leader out there, every business person, man or woman, every employee, every business owner, we're all busy. But if we don't take the time out like the woodcutter, we're never going to reach our true potential and that's not just financial abundance. That's also peace. It's freedom. It's, it's living the life of joy and, and contentment. And that's why I put the time and effort and energy into what I do. So that's all from me. Day one, I'll bring you day two. It is quite a long update. Um, some will think that I'm airy-fairy and esoterical. But I believe that going inwards is the way to ultimate um, peace and, and serenity. And lastly, I also believe that if you want to change the world, you have to start with changing yourself. And I'm prepared to do the work. That's my commitment. And to share it with you so that you too can do it. Cheers.